If people told me no, they were replaced with people who would tell me yes. He's in love with me. In love with me. Look at me. <laughs> I am the ultimate narcissist, right? That's who I am. I need attention. I always have. And I was given it early, so it just it became part of who I was. Ryan David Leaf, born May 15th, 1976. When you search biggest draft bust of all time, you don't have to go far before you see today's feature. He's either one or two. Funny, because when he was leaving Washington State early for the draft, that was the question that blanketed the 1998 NFL Draft. Would Ryan Leaf go one over Peyton Manning or two to the San Diego Chargers that moved up to secure a chance to draft one of the two quarterbacks that was supposed to be can't miss and change franchises? Well, they were half right. Peyton Manning didn't miss and changed two franchises over his career, winning them both a championship ring and is seen as a top five quarterback of all time. The Colts, who passed on taking Ryan Leaf as he scoffed at their decision on draft night, made arguably the greatest decision they ever made, taking Peyton, who brought them their first championship since 1971, winning in 2007, defeating the Bears 29-17. Wanna guess where Ryan Leaf was in 2007? Nowhere near the NFL. In fact, he hadn't played a game in the league since 2002. By 2007, he was a quarterback's coach at West Texas A&M, a year out from being fired from his job for stealing pills from a player. From there, he was arrested multiple times, served 32 months in prison, and even as recent as 2020 has been in the hands of the law. A far cry from where he and his expectations were back in 1998 when he was seen on the same level as an eventual Hall of Famer, four to be exact. He was drafted in front of three of them. Doing a Ryan Leaf story that's been overly documented over the years, you have to ask yourself what's to be taken from this story and what can be shared. For any athlete, the takeaway is simple. Understand that no matter how good you are or how good you've been on one level, you will never be bigger than the game. That's the beauty of athletics. As humans, we all have expiration dates on how long we can perform to a level the world consider us to play sports at the highest level. This means when your time is up, someone else gets their chance and the cycle continues. As fans, we get to see many different types, styles, and personalities as there's no expiration on fandom. So use your time in the sun wisely or end up disappointed like Ryan Leaf, an admitted narcissist that craved for attention. Now he can get it for the rest of his life, just not the one Peyton Manning gets, the chairs and adoration. No, it's just the opposite. The boos and fathers, coaches, and sports fans telling their young athlete just don't end up like Ryan Leaf. What happened? Let's talk about it. The tragic story of the biggest bust in NFL history. It's your boy JC Stunted Growth. Let's get it, man. My ego is out of control. The guys I surrounded myself with were just enabling my behavior. I treated all of my alumni and all of my peers like sh Take a minute to like, subscribe, and comment on who I should do next. Ryan Leaf was a 6'5 quarterback from Great Falls, Montana that knew he wanted to be a professional football player since a child. One of three boys, he was always highly competitive to the point if he lost, you had to run it back. And as he won the second time, he says he had to embarrass you. Ryan couldn't understand why after the games, kids didn't want to be around him anymore and chalked it up to them not understanding his greatness. At that point, he didn't know he had narcissistic tendencies, something he'd learn later on in life, but knew that he craved attention. During his youth, the attention would come at rapid pace as he got better at playing football. He was a star football player all throughout high school and won his team a state championship in 1992. Washington State head coach Mike Price called Ryan with a promise together they could both play in the game of their dreams, the Rose Bowl, if he came to Washington State, and that's when Ryan's mind was made up. Later, he would call it the best four years of his life and best decision he's ever made. Stunt number one, unchecked and unaccounted for behavior. 
But I can look back now and really see how my behavior was unchecked. I was pretty much enabled by the people that wanted me to succeed and never held me accountable for anything. One of the biggest missteps in the life of Ryan Leaf, especially as an athlete, was his behavior never being checked or held accountable during the development stages of his life all the way into adulthood when he crashed into a wall of it beginning in the NFL. Imagine a lover of ice cream being fed it uncontrollably for years and years, then one day you tell them no. You can't have that anymore. The tantrum they throw would be equivalent to what we saw in the case of Ryan Leaf. Only for Ryan, it was attention and constantly being told yes. In a Washington State Global Connection special on Ryan Leaf called Lying to Myself, he says just as much. That yes men were a constant in his life to the point it became a need as well. He was told absolutely, occasionally, never possibly, and most certainly not ever no. For a guy already built to thrive off having whatever he wanted, when the real world finally hit him and he wasn't protected by daddy's war veteran history or mommy's popular nurse in the city background or college football star, Rose Bowl champion and second overall pick in the draft, he didn't know how to deal with it. It happens all the time. Granted, not on the stage of Ryan Leaf. When football became a business, Ryan says it lost its luster to him and that's why he didn't do things like work on his body or care about being at minicamp after the team drafted him and paid him $31 million. He didn't care that his football career was starting to go down the drain. He just bounced on to places he'd be lifted up and placed on a pedestal for his ego to go unchecked and unaccounted for like it was when he was the man. He was taken second overall and vowed to win a championship in San Diego. He even won his first two games and played well. By week three, fat and happy off immediate success, he played the worst game of his life according to him. And from there, he knew he was done. Stunt number two, immaturity. Which leads me to the byproduct of a person's ego going unchecked and unaccounted for by enablers is an immature way of handling situations, especially when they become difficult. Much more so when you give said person more money than they feel they still need you for. One thing that separated Ryan and Peyton were their personalities. Peyton Manning was bred to be a high level NFL quarterback. He's the second son of two-time Pro Bowl quarterback Archie Manning, who though had his successes in the league, also saw the other side of success, so knows from both perspectives what it takes to get it right at that level. Both of his sons made it to the NFL and played at a high level, both winning at least one championship. If there were ever a quarterback ready for any situation the NFL could throw his way, it was Peyton Manning. Mature doesn't even begin to explain Manning's character, along with he's one of those people whose personality actually fits his profession. The best performers in any walk of life are the ones who do exactly what they were called to do and have the perfect personality for it. Ryan Leaf, who came out of nowhere Montana, who was enabled his entire life with no one he respected to correct him, let his immature ways show far too often and it affected his play on the field. Like the time he and Peyton Manning were interviewed by the Colts and asked what would they do after being the number one pick. Peyton answered exactly how it was supposed to have been answered. Work hard, study the playbook, rest and be ready for the season. Leaf, on the other hand, set a trip to Vegas to celebrate and that's exactly what he did after going number two. This wasn't the first red flag for Leaf's personality and immature ways and wouldn't be the last. By his third NFL game against the Kansas City Chiefs, Ryan was tested and failed miserably on and off the field. He had an outburst heard across the locker room on a reporter and had to be restrained. Not mature enough to apologize himself, the team wrote an apology for him, which he reluctantly read, then threw in his locker all in front of media. Rookie or not, that was the moment you knew this guy couldn't lead a professional team. The Chargers won five games that season and went 1-15 the next as Ryan showed up out of shape once again. 
Leaf threw for 13 touchdowns and 33 interceptions in two seasons. The team released Leaf February 2001, whose teammates all applauded the decision because they thought he was too immature to lead them and too arrogant to notice he couldn't. Stunt number three, dealing with failure. And finally, Ryan's inability to deal with being a failure, seeing as losing and being told he wasn't good enough wasn't something he heard very often. Tampa Bay signed Leaf but wanted him to be a fourth string backup, but because he refused, they released him as well. He was later picked up by the Cowboys but failed his physical and was released shortly after. After Quincy Carter got hurt, they signed Ryan again who played four games for them, throwing 494 yards, one touchdown, and three interceptions. He finished his career with 14 touchdowns and 36 interceptions, making him one of the worst of all time. He would get into coaching at West Texas A&M but was fired for taking pills from one of the players which started a long string of incidences involving Ryan and getting in trouble for opioid use and even arrested and fined. His biggest was the 2012 arrest for burglary after he broke into a home in Montana in search of pain medication. He was sentenced to up to seven years in prison. He served two years and was released in 2014. He was arrested again in 2020 for misdemeanor domestic battery and received three years probation, which he's still on today. Ryan failed in the NFL and dealt with that by continuing to fail in life. He's trying to right the ship through telling his story and hopefully motivating others not to be like him. Is it a ploy to somehow stay on stage because he's obviously not taking his own advice? All in all, Ryan's story goes to show that no matter the race, you can have it all and still not have what it takes to succeed if you're not careful and have the people around you that tell you the truth about your actions. He's considered the biggest bust of all time and most of it is because of things he allowed to happen. Hope he gets the help he needs, but for these reasons, his growth was stunted. It's your boy JC, stunted growth, and I'm out. Don't talk to me, all right? Knock it off! Are you done?